greetings and salutations just one more time man on the hit show with stories written by a current prisoner which your friendly neighborhood tony man i'm looking for two public speakers out there that if they can share maybe two three five minutes of their time at the beginning of one of these shows the two topics that i'm wishing to touch upon is credit you know I'm, I'm, i want someone to break it down man you know how to establish credit how to make credit how to fix your credit you know what i'm saying on top of that i'm also looking for someone to touch upon college how to enroll in college how to how to acquire these grants i know there's fafsa there's all types of government aid that basically helps us and 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 basically loans us money if we don't have money to go to school you know to, to get our degrees and basically we pay that back once it's all said and done so that's a beautiful thing in itself so there's there's almost no excuses why you shouldn't be able to go back to school you know so with that being said ladies and gentlemen always chase your dreams man we only have one life this life is so short so make sure you live it to the best of your abilities you know what i'm saying so please if if, if, the, if you're that special someone that can provide us this information to propel us to the next level man then please give me a phone call man 562-576-3540 man like i said it man let's talk about raises and not ending up in cages man please hit the like button and subscribe on your way out much love to you guys man Shout out to the homie Tony. It's another teachable moment. It's your boy Eddie Mundo right here. Well, we're here for part two for my little brother Savage. He gonna sp spread some wisdom on y'all. Listen and listen well. Little brother, the floor is yours. Hi. Um, well, this is part two of uh, my life story. Happy to be back. But we're going to start off where we left off in the last questionnaires. And um, so I work in a backtrack to catch up, speed up real quick. Well, I left off at what had happened at my sentencing or my preliminary hearing. Uh, with the victim's family coming on the stand and uh, the little boy uh, offering ten dollars so his father can live well upon returning back to uh, the juvenile detention facility it was a very hard moment for me because i knew that the decision i was about to make was going to be life altering and i remember going into my cell sitting there on the bunk and thinking to myself, I got to do it. And I heard this this voice in the van that would always, like, my neighbor would always be reading out loud. And I got curious and I asked him, hey, uh, what is it that you're reading? And he told me he was reading Psalms, the Bible. And uh, I told him if he could read me the famous Psalms 23. And... I told him why was he a, a gang member if he believed in the Bible and uh, he said he wanted to change and I told him well change happens when you make the first step and you say you're done right well he said he was afraid so I told him fear is not as knowing the unknown and that's what scares us so I told him this is what I'm going to do for the both of us. So upon everybody going back in their cells, uh, I called everybody on the van and I stated my full name and my nickname, uh, Brian Vargas Savage from uh, SSD. Uh, I no longer want to be part of the movement, the cause. I think it's just worthless. I don't... I wasted my life and I wasted my time being part of this and I didn't gain nothing out of it but a life sentence and I remember everybody being in shock disappointed and something in me broke because for so long I lived under this nickname and that I didn't know what I was gonna do well two of my stepbrothers were there and uh the next morning, that's uh, how it usually would happen. Uh, 
I was uh, jumped in the day room for being a dropout. And uh, at the end of the day, I let my pride keep me there. And I told myself that I wasn't going to go, that the only way I was going to go was in a gurney, airlifted, or in a casket. So I remember one Friday night, it was movie night, and uh, many people are wondering, like, hey, why did you get such a Cali such a big California tattooed on your face, right? Well, it just so happened that on this Friday of uh, 2014, um, we were watching a movie, and halfway through the movie, I already knew I was going to get removed. Both my brothers and two other uh, inmates uh, sliced me and jumped me, and uh, that's when I realized that I could no longer come back. And uh, upon going from there, transferring to the youth authority known as YA or DJJ or CYA, uh, it was very hard for me because I still wanted to feel like I had it in me to be, be a northerner. And one half was like, a minute to win it then the other half was was battling with the trying to change and when i got there it was very serious things got very very serious the gang stuff was very very heavy um i had a fight every day uh i was sliced i was jumped there wasn't a day where i didn't come out and got beat up for being a dropout my brother put a green light on me from prison for leaving the game and I let all that anger just build up that it turned to resentment so I told myself that instead of coming out and becoming a victim I should come out and start victimizing and I would come out and take that on the first northerner I saw and I noticed that I wasn't getting nowhere in my, with myself and I was just digging my hole deeper and deeper and when I turned 18 and I had to go to the big house with the big boys, uh, I didn't know how to drop out. I knew as that I could say I wasn't a gang member, but I didn't know how to talk to the correctional officers and tell them. So they said GP or SNY, I said G GP. So I said, I'm going to go and clear myself, right? And uh, it was at that moment where an active northerner was in the cage in front of me and he told me, what my name was and i stated my name to him and he told me i know who you are we're waiting for you to show up to the block and i was like oh really and uh, he saved my life uh, he said look bro i'm not supposed to tell you this but the minute you hit that block you're gonna get killed because there's a bounty on you and i said who put it on me and it hurt me when i realized that my brother had chose the games over his own blood and flesh, right? Over his little brother. And uh, when I went to the SNY side, I realized that it was the same cycle. Uh, I saw, I was surrounded by Northern dropouts, Southern dropouts, a bunch of different dropout gang members and they had gangs and I didn't know who to fit in with. I didn't fit in with this group. I didn't fit in with the other group. I just knew that at the end of the day, I had to find who I was, so I didn't know who Brian was, and I understand the feeling of not knowing who you are inside, because for so long, people tell you who you're supposed to be, and you're never allowed to tell them who you really are. So all my life, I've been told I would always be a criminal, that I wasn't going to be nothing, and I'm telling you guys now that you guys are more than what you guys believe. Don't ever put limits on yourselves and you guys can achieve anything that you guys want to. I messed up because upon entering the S and Y side, I went back to what I knew. I realized the violence and it was a revolving door and people always say that a click goes off in the on, on the inside of your head where you realize that your life is going nowhere and i realized that when i was in i was in the hole it was raining 
and the roof leaked and I remember being woken up to water drops hitting my forehead and my cell was flooded me and my Sally got up cleaned water that was nasty from decades and decades of bird poop just like being watered down into our cell and I remember just sitting there on the stool right after we cleaned we cleaned up and I looked at the at the cages the little kennels that you work out in when you're in the hole and I realized like damn this is my life uh, I'm a dog I'm an animal like I get told when I have to go work out and I get put in a dog cage and it clicked I heard a click go off in my head and I realized that I needed to change for the better and change is you can't not force change and that's where my mess up was I was so destined to change that I was forcing it and when I fell I would stay down instead of fully just letting it run its course I throughout my prison experience I experienced a lot of downfalls a lot of good friendships a, a lot of like life altering moments um, I was involved in a lot of things and even though I wanted to change I didn't know how to and when I came to this prison that I'm in right now uh, even then I didn't know who I was and I had a lot of people vouching for me trying to seek the better for me and I just didn't know how to I didn't know how to be me I didn't know how to cope with myself or even accept the fact that I wasn't who I used to be and that's hard and as you watch this I can under I can understand what you guys go through when you guys feel that you guys are misunderstood because even to this day at times I feel misunderstood and misheard I feel that I'm just upon my appearances and I feel like I'm just just based on how I look and the same thing appearances right and um what I did to change was accepting who I was and who I am and having compassion with myself. I went to a group recently and this guy sat there and when he was talking, I felt like he was talking to me. And you guys need to have compassion for yourselves because if you don't and every time you fall, you keep beating yourself down, you're not going to get nowhere. and. I realized that I'm not a bad person. I just made bad choices and I'm paying for them. And I can tell you guys now that throughout my whole prison experience, I wanted to give up. I wanted to just go back to the game banging and, and just forget about everything and everyone because I felt like I'm here. Nobody cares. And good people that have been in prison for many many years have stood by my side have held my hand have gave me a shoulder to cry on because they understood my pain and my struggles and what I did to give back to them was finding groups that helped me that helped me understand who I was that helped me cope with all the anger and resentment that I had inside and learning how to let go. And I realized that my name is Brian Vargas and I'm 24 years old. I've been in prison 11 years and I am going to get out. And my way of giving back is telling you young kids and young women out there that I understand you a lot of uh, a lot of us here understand you and you you're not alone and we don't want you guys to go through what we went through because it's a very very hard life being behind these bars and watching everybody's life go on and yours just pauses um, I've never gotten my driver's license I don't know what it is to go to the beach, to go to the snow, and by you guys choosing to become gang members or just 
keep repeating the same cycle and getting incarcerated, you guys lose out in a lot of moments that at the time you guys think are like everyday things that you see. But I'd give anything just to see like a lake, a pond, just a moving car and touch it. I would give anything just to see a freeway. Um, but I gave it up to wear blue pants and blue shirts and just be a number in the system. And what I would like for you guys to know is that I go up for board in four years and my mission doesn't stop after I get out. My mission will always continue for the life that I took. Cito Vasquez. I took that man's life and made him a memory and a heartache to his family and to my own self. And if I can prevent someone that, that, is, that was my age when I committed the crime, that is angry, and I know a lot of you young kids are angry, they're solved. And I'm telling you, I've been there and I've done it. And really, I became a better version of myself that I never thought I could become thanks to the people around me. And I'm telling you guys that I'm here. We're all here and we listen. And many people ask, so why do you try to give advice to like people that are in your shoes or are wanting to be in your shoes if you never listen? And I wish that somebody like me could have spoke to me, could have taken the time of day to look me in the eyes and tell me, I know what you're going through. I understand you, I hear you. And what it just gave me a hug and told me everything was gonna be all right. And like 13 years later into my criminal life and my heart just making bad decisions all the time, uh, I realized that I can do that to you guys and tell you guys that sometimes you gotta struggle to get where you're at, but don't give up when things get hard because when you give up, that's when you start realizing that nothing, like you feel hopeless and you start thinking that nothing really matters and things do matter and you do matter and most of us come from broken homes, from uh, our lifestyles and uh, that doesn't, I then that doesn't make you the person that you are today because, or it doesn't make you a bad person because at the end of the day, everybody's good. And I guess what I'm really trying to say is that I really care about you guys, for everybody that's watching this. Um, I really do care and I just want the best for you guys. And uh, I wish I can give more, give more back to society and I'm doing everything that I can because if I can at least affect one of you guys and touch one of, one of your hearts to not be in this place, then I feel like I did my job. At the end of the day, the gang, it's not even worth it. It's its a fake movement, it's broken. It's, it was never there, it never benefits you, it benefits somebody else and you don't realize it until you're getting replaced and you realize that all along you were just a pawn in a chess game and even here, you think coming on this side and changing would just be easier, but it's not because you're around a lot of your old friends and a lot of the old fellas, as you would call them, and you get caught up in the game still and you don't want to look like a weak person. So you say yes to everything, even when you know inside that it's wrong. And 
I know that the hardest thing to say is no. And even for me, it has been a struggle to say no. But I have compassion towards myself when I have downfalls. And I'm learning to say no. And I say no to to the violence, to the gangs, to everything that can prevent me from going home and walking out these gates and sitting there face to face with a young man or a young woman and explaining them my life and what happens when you join a gang. And I just want to end this by saying, look me up on TikTok as Savage Lyrics and on my Instagram as Brian Vargas. And you guys will read my poems. You guys will see my art expressing heartaches and pains and just things representing the everyday struggles of prisoners that they go through while in prison. Most of us are forgotten. Most of us people don't even think about us. And I just want to end this by saying God bless you guys and I I send all my love towards you guys and everybody around me with the want to say they want to say don't give up stay strong and i end this now thank you